It's a showcase night for the WNBL as the game stops by the Victorian provincial capital of Geelong. And it is an event of real significance. One of the world's great point guards, Christy Harawa, returns to the Australian League after eight years of international domination. Hello, I'm Jared Waitley and this is Grandstand WNBL Live on ABC2. Welcome to the arena where Harawa tonight suits up the Bendigo, the team that her family has been so influential in establishing and her task, well, it's to lift spirits in every way that you could imagine. Their opponents tonight, the Dandenong Rangers, perennial finalists. They walk straight out of the gates on their first weekend of action and straight into the winner's chair. Laurie Chiswick, three times the WNBL Championship coach, your expert tonight. Laurie, you've seen so much of Christy, both here and her overseas career. It is tremendous for the league to have her back. Absolutely, Jared. She is one of the uh, world's best point guards for sure. She is one of two Olympians that's currently playing in the WNBL. And with her experience and stature, she should be a real focal point for our competition. And not a moment too soon for Bendigo. They're in a wretched stretch, having lost 10 in a row, seven at the end of last year. They're zero and three to start this season. They could really use some lifting of the spirit. It certainly isn't the way that uh, Bernie Hara would have expected his season to start, but Christie will bring a new dimension to the team, and I'm sure it'll uh, pick them up in many ways. And for Danny Ong, they've been in five final series in a row, just straight to Launceston, business as usual, straight onto the winning chair. Well, that is a good start for them. However, they've had a lot of people go out of their lineup, and they're going to have to gel early. And really, we'll see how their American import has an impact on their team. So after two rounds of competition, this is how the ladder stands. Uh, Danny Nong there in fourth place, Bendigo 0 and 3. But you think the top three, Laurie, Canberra, Adelaide, and Townsville had a predictable feel about it, and it might stretch the duration of the season in something like that order. Well, I know it's only very early days, but after round two, I really believe that that is the order that the, the league may end in. Canberra's very dominant, Adelaide's good on paper, and barring injury to either of those three teams, I think that just might be the way we could see it finish. It's our first chance to delve into these two teams' rosters and see what happened in the off-season, where the, the comings and goings were. It's not a bad list of ins that Bendigo had put together. Well, it is, and they do need to cover for the loss of Kathleen McLeod and Jenna O'Hay. But with the addition of Dee Butler and Kelly Smith, and now Christy Harrower, Bendigo have three legitimate point guards. And for Danny Nong, they were busy, certainly busy. If Zeri comes in, and Cunningham we'll talk about shortly, they've got a bit to cover as well. They do, with the loss of Michelle Brogan, Shelley Hammonds, and we haven't written down Larissa Anderson. Three bigs for the team. They're going to have to cover that. Jenny Benningfield and Caitlin Cunningham in their height department are going to be very much challenged. Our coaches tonight, Bernie Harrow and Dale Waters, you had a chance, Laurie, to speak with both of them about what their focus has been throughout the week coming to tonight. Oh, it's certainly our defence. Last weekend we were very poor defensively. We'd given up nearly 200 points in two games, which, um, you know, at this level is unacceptable. We've certainly got to be a lot tougher, and, um, you know, so we spent a lot of time on the intensity that we need to do things at in our team rotation and just uh, all the fundamentals of defence more than anything else. So, you know, we'd been struggling offensively, and I felt this week, our, um, or last weekend, our, our offence started to click for us. We started to make shots but uh, our defence just wasn't up to scratch. Yeah, look, a first uh, great hit out for us against Logan last week, particularly at the defensive end of the floor. We need to make sure we consolidate that again for this weekend's game against the Spirit. Uh, particularly, our focus will be defending the high-low action and having specific talk on their screening action in offence as well. So it's the Spirit and the Rangers here in Geelong. Now, the players that we might focus on, I reckon Christy Harrow is right at the top of the list. I think she'd have to be our number one player, Christy. We talked about what, what she can do. She can certainly, we know she's the uh, point guard that runs the show. She's got a great three-point shot. She can drive, she can finish, she can pass. But really what I like to think about Christy is what she's going to bring to the rest of her teammates. She's going to make them better by her leadership, by the things that she can work with them and teach them. She lifts that intensity. She's going to make the players around her stand up. And you've picked out Gabrielle Richards as well as being pivotal tonight. 
Gab gives uh, Bendigo a big inside presence. She really uses her body well to uh, get position and finishes inside. She's a very good offensive rebounder and a real go-to player for them. And for the Rangers, Nicole Hunt. She was first up last weekend after being recruited out of her time in the AIS. Well, you talk about apprentices and masters, and certainly uh, Nicole falls into that apprentice role. Great point guard coming from the Institute. She actually played her off-season with Sandringham, which was good for her to lead players that were slightly older than her. She can now bring that into the standing on roster. And Caitlin Cunningham is a pivotal addition as well as to how she'll be able to push through this lineup. Great opportunity for Caitlin to be with Danny Nong. She's a great athlete. She runs the floor well. Now is her time to prove that she's not just a potential player. She's arrived. Running at our team at the arena tonight, Eleanor Sharp, who played in four championships as a player. And Eleanor, it is hard not to be swept up in the return of Christy Harrower. That's right, Jared. There is certainly a buzz around this stadium. I think all these kids have come here to see that champion that we know, Christy Harrower. Looking to tonight's game, I think that Dan Dong are really going to have to take that young lady, Christy Harrower, out of the game, limit her touches, and really minimise her impact because she can have a huge impact on the game. Also, Dan Dong probably need to get through their offence and grind it out, be disciplined and um, methodical in, in the way they go about their offensive structure. Talking to Emily McInerney before the game, she seemed to think that they're looking to go an inside-outside game, so I look for that throughout the as the game uh, takes place. For Bendigo, I think if they really capitalise off Christie, the players, her teammates really must move off her. It's no good just standing back and looking at her, letting her go to work. They really need to move to the open gap, take their shots when they're open, and also crush the boards. Should be a fantastic game. It does have a real sense of anticipation about it. And just talking to Christy Harrow beforehand, we've recorded an interview for halftime. She's nervous. She doesn't get nervous too often when you're as experienced as she is. But Laurie, on this return, and she's in the starting five, of course she is. She's on the nervous side. Well, imagine just coming off of playing at the Olympics and now you're, uh, you're nervous in your home country domestic competition. That's a fantastic thing, though. Um, Christy, while she's in the starting lineup, and it may seem new, she has been training with the group for five weeks, and she did suit up against Boleyn in a practice match. So she's joined by uh, Butler and Richards with Wilson and Herring. Uh, on the Danny Nong side of things, Ryan, now the scouting last week was that Ryan was the star in Launceston when they beat Logan 63-48. McInerney, well it wouldn't be a Danny Nong side if McInerney wasn't running the defence and Hunt really looking forward to seeing how she goes with Downey and Benningfield. So we're nearly in readiness to get it underway. Just as a snapshot, one player into a side, it will do a lot to, to buoy them, to give them confidence. Can he get too one-dimensional in these things or is the game of basketball suited to, to a general out on the court to really influence your fortunes? Well, I think I think having Christy will be only only positive. As I said, she's trained with them, so it's not like she's stepping in and they have to get used to her. She will run the show. She will know whose hands to get it into. Uh, she will take her own opportunities, and certainly it's another focus that Danny don't have to stop. So our refs, Chris Reed, Daniel Bannock, and Jason Kelly officiating tonight. The Rangers, one start for one win. And the spirit of loss three so far. They put up 95 points against Perth and got beaten by six. Which is a little bit staggering. Well, it's hard to believe. When I saw that scoreline, I thought for sure it had to be double overtime. And no, it was just happened in the regular game. Chris Reed to officiate at the start. Christy Harrow, a broad smile. It's the spirit and the Rangers at Geelong Arena. And we are underway. Opening position going the way of Wilson and straight into the hands of Harrower. A settler, I'm sure, back and forward with Wilson. Richards flicks it out wide. Harrower pushes into the key. Turned away by McInerney. Two opals spacing off there. Richards, the presence underneath. Back to Harrower. The shot clock reaches four. Bounce pass, long range. Butler! Nice way to start. She is continuing from where she left off against Perth. She scored 25 in that first game, and it's good to see that she's um, putting them up early. Ryan with the ball, McInerney. Benningfield doing the bustling underneath. She has it, there's no shot to be taken there. McInerney, quick thinking, out wide, long range, Ryan. 
Jeff, this continues in this vein, the shooting form. It'll be something to behold. Steve Butler went to help out when that ball went inside, and, and Danny Nong did a good job of rotating the ball and getting it into Caitlin's hands. Two three-pointers to get us underway. Richards underneath, working hard, missed the points. Danny Nong down the floor. It's in the hands of Ryan. McInerney, first chance for Hunt. The whistle call. That's a good aggressive move for Nicole to take early in the game. Get herself to the basket, get herself to the foul line. Foul on Wilson. Ball from the side, back into the hands of Hunt where it was. Searching McInerney just off the fingertips, but Ryan was there to make good. Double team did well to hang on. Benningfield. No shot to be had. The defense holding firm. Hunt with the shot clock at eight. Takes it. Can't make it. Underneath Benningfield's a strong presence. And the Rangers get another chance. It's good to see Benningfield out there. We haven't had a look at her yet. She's been injured previously. So two missed shots here, but the Rangers still have the ball. And a chance to set up again. So nothing since the first pair of three-pointers. Hunt to add to the toll, not to be. Coming up a mite short. Wilson down the floor into the hands of Butler. Arrow sets out to the right. She's going to take the shot. Oh. Ambitious, but when you're that good, why not? What an opening basket for her first one back. Any talk of nerves, well, that's just ridiculous. 6-3, outstanding. Ball out over the side. Danny don't get it back. Certainly appears that um, Bendigo have picked up their defensive intensity from perhaps where it was the last couple of weekends. Hunt couldn't find the way through. She's got good support. McInerney to take the shot. She doesn't make it. Richards underneath. Harrell has got the ball. She's on the move. She's feeding Herring underneath, who makes the two and gets the extra chance. That's a great, when Christie can back that pass and reward somebody that's running down the floor and you finish it and go to the line, that's a real lift for this team. Give them a sense of confidence early when you're trying to break a 10 match losing streak. Any source of optimism is welcome. Herring can't make the bonus. So the Rangers get away with one now. It's a five point ball game. working it round. She's faced off by Wilson McInerney underneath Benningfield had to get low then get up and get in. That was a nice back to the basket move very strong had a good position good body position on um, Gab Richards. Positive start and Wilson can't add to the toll for Bendigo. The Rangers hair down the court it's Hunt who might go all the way. Lovely touch off the glass. Nice little change of pace there. Just caught Wilson bringing her body up and then drove straight past her. And matched at the other end by Christy Harrower. Two number tens. I reckon there's a fair chance Hunt might have idolised Harrower. Growing up, Benningfield takes the points. Bendigo by one. Some real fluency in the match now. Spirit working around. Richards underneath. Pushes clear. Herring to take the good work. Both teams are making exceptional decisions in their, in their ball movement. When they're double teamed or when they're put pressure, they've really found that open player. Nicole Hunt celebrated her 20th birthday during the week. McInerney, who's been in this league forever. Benningfield offloaded unfairly. And the pushing foul is called as we prepare for the first substitution. And Caitlin Cunningham is going to walk into the game. One to watch tonight. Katie Ebsery, number five, has been actually very ill for the last couple of weeks. We weren't sure if we were going to see her on court today. McInerney. That ball out well for Ebzeri. First touch of the night. It's not points, but she'll get another crack at it. We should mention that Hannah Zavik not taking her place for Bendigo tonight. She's still injured, has a, a bulging disc, we understand, in her back, which is going to keep her out for uh, two or three weeks. 
was the scouting information from Bendigo. For the points, Zeri comes up empty with the first. 18-year-old who has played with the Gems. The underage national side, she makes her second. And it is 12 points to 10. With five and a half minutes left in the opening term, it's the Spirit by two. Wilson's got Harrower breaking out to the right. Richards offers the block. Harrow couldn't get far enough inside. Harrowing underneath. Good move. And Richards plonks it in. Great recognition of a mismatch there by Eleanor Harding. They had switched and Nicole found herself on Gab Richards. Hump searching for the right option in the hands of McInerney. Of Zeri. Cunningham with the shield there. Abzeri gives it back to Hunt from long range. Came up short that time. Harrower quick with the distribution. Butler down the floor has Herring underneath. Couldn't quite get it there. Out to Richards to reset for Harrower. Who does some coaching out on the court. They've still got 12 seconds to work with on the shot clock. Richards back to Butler from range. It was a good looking arc, but it wasn't a drop. Hunt whisks it away down the other end. Both teams are, are not wasting any time in getting the ball up the floor and really exploring that first, you know, five, eight seconds of the shot clock. Hunt sees it down to seven and six and takes the shot and it does everything but fall. Down or sharp, the early stages, some positive signs for the Spirit about to get better with Herring dropping two more. We'll di dive into the timeouts here. Go into the Danny Long Rangers first up with Dale Waters and talk to Eleanor on the other side. Right. Look, I just think like de defensively here now, like, we've got to find them nice and early and locked out. So you play really tight on her in the quarter court there, but scrambles back. Girls, once it's past our line, you've got to get back fast and communicate the scramble back into it. Offense is all right, but at the moment we've probably only got one or two people going towards the board. There's too much outside action. My feet in the paint, then back outside again. Next play down here, let's run Rusty, okay? Yeah. And then run a Tricks, okay? Yeah. A Rusty, then a Tricks. Okay, here we go. Rangers. Rusty with a shot of Tricks on the end. <laughs> Sound too bad for the post game. Interesting to see how that pans out. Laurie, I'll get you to tell us what they were when you see them unfold. Spirit by six. Alan Wishard, what did you detect from Bendigo? Well, it was a Harrower show in there, Jared. There was a Harrower Senior and then Harrower Junior both chipping in, but uh, fairly composed. Uh, Bernie wants more ball reversal and offensive boards down uh, the offensive end. Defensively, they want to try and deny the high to... That's it. There we see the reversal there. Chrissy almost got a hand to it, but they want to try and deny that pass and stop the Dandenong reversal. Is that Rusty or Tricks? It's points. Ebzeri with a two. And it's Bendigo by four. Ebzeri has three points. Harrow has five. And Herring six for the Spirit. Hands of Richards and on to Butler. Herring doing some good work again underneath. Can't push through to the paint. In fact, she's travelled. And Bendigo lose the chance this time. That was possibly that high, high low action that Bernie Harrower was talking about that they had worked on defending during the week. Caitlin Cunningham has the ball. With a whistle. It's still going to be a Danny on goal from the side with a holding foul called on Harrower. First foul to go with the five points so far. On the back of the court, Hunt looking for the right option. Floats it up near Cunningham, who couldn't handle it. It's a turnover, and they might pay. They will pay, or oh, they won't pay underneath. <laughs> Gee, there was some heavy blocking done by Ryan and Kelly Wilson. Again, a really quick outlet here, running the floor. Deanna Butler sees ahead. Good hustle by Caitlin Ryan. Looks to be a Bendigo ball still. Harrower comes up shallow with the shot and hunts. Powering down the other end, off to Ebzeri. Back to Hunt, not without its risk. Charging through and making two. Nicole, for a player of her size, finishes very well under traffic. Takes it hard to the basket here. Four points. 
And she has been influential, Nicole Hunt. Harrell with some coaching out on the court. Into Harring in the paint, takes the jump shot, can't make it. Emily McInerney is there to retrieve. And set the Rangers on a path to the other end. Ryan flicks it up. Cunningham, first meaningful touch, is good. Well, just exactly what Dale Waters wanted in the um, timeout when he talked about getting the ball inside, getting your feet in the paint, making the defense collapse a little bit. Six-point run for the Rangers to tie things up. Richards will break the deadlock underneath. Nine and 19 in the two matches last week. You've got to keep in mind the 19 came in a performance of 95 and hard to read with Bernie Harrow telling us there was next to no defence. So those numbers are, uh, are skewed. Ball was lost here by Dandenong. McInerney has turned the ball over for the second time. We're juggling the benches here. It was a defensive foul on McInerney in the second. Harrow is calling the shots. Hunt is her marker. A pair of tens down the course. Lauren King with her opening touch to Richards. Kick it back to Herring. King again works it underneath. The points from Richards. The foul is drawn. It's called on Cunningham. You can see a lot of um, Bendigo's offenses start in a four high set so that when somebody like Gab Richards in that instance cuts hard to the basket, it's not a lot of help defense. Inside the final two minutes of the opening quarter. Bendigo have led throughout. Extend that to three points now and Richards should make it four. She's up to that task. Now it's up to the Rangers. Probst is in for her first run. She has the ball from Hunt. She might give it straight back. Probst followed in underneath. Hunt couldn't get it there. Confronted. Benningfield spreads it around. Abzieri takes the shot. No. Richards with the rebound. They can whisk it away and build this lead. Approaching quarter time, Bendigo. Harawa. A long way outside, she goes, she can't come up with three. And with 80 seconds left on the clock, Hunt gave it straight up to Harrowan. It's not really the fast break on because the defence was set deep. It was an unexpected turnover. Work the clock, the spirit here. Butler appears in underneath Herring, made good position. She's got one on one, she rises, can't make it though. Away the foul, and here endeavours to get it back. So a minute to go. It's a four point ball game. As the substitutions are called again. It's going to narrow because the Spirit are in foul trouble. The Rangers going directly to the line. It's good to see Faith Cross back in the lineup as well. She's she's had a bit of back trouble. Probs, there's just a discussion to take place. Over on the side here. Yeah? Not entirely sure what uh, might be taking place there, but Faith Probs is in discussion. Looks like uh, Jasmine Finnegan is coming in and Richards is going out. Whatever the cause of the delay was, it's now sorted out. So still one to come. It's a 20 to 16 ball game. It's 2017 now as Probst makes the shots. Or the second of them at least. Harrell with King. Herring, who's been good in the first quarter. This is McLean. Herring. Pushes in, tries to get there and does. And Harrell puts on the court press on Hunt. Who's good enough to come up with it though. It's a five point lead, Bendigo's way. We wondered what the influence of Christy Harrell would be. It's been significant on the court. 
significant on the scoreboard, both in leadership and ability. She has. She's been a real steadying influence. The ball's in her hand the last 16 seconds. McLean and Herring get a chance for one shot here if they use it well. Harrower. The game clock ticking toward five. Cut through class. Great There's your world-class point guard right there. Definitely. Quarter time at the arena in Geelong and the Bendigo Spirit making a bright start. 24 to 17, they lead the Dandenong Rangers. A lot to like about what we've seen. Herring with eight and Harrell with seven. That's been the major scoring from Bendigo. They finished with the last four of the quarter, but they pretty well led throughout. This is some of the action that took place. Well, the start of the game, we had three three-point shots that all went down. There were absolutely no nerves. Both teams did a great job of pushing the ball up the floor, having runners that are getting to the point of the rim and outside nice and wide. We had people driving to the basket. It was a real mixture, and, and um, I was very impressed with both teams early on. And I guess what you wanted to see from the Spirit was a lift, and it was certainly there. I liked, uh, I liked Hunt for the Rangers in the first quarter. Well, she hasn't been putting up a lot of shots in games, so it was good to see her being aggressive and taking the ball to the basket and looking at her shots. That last play of Christy Harrower's, that little change of pace, what a great way for them to finish the quarter. Some of the numbers, the shooting's not too bad, 56% for Bendigo and 47 for the Rangers. And just having a look at the rebounds, the Rangers lead those 10 to 6. Well, it is. It's a high-quality basketball game shown by the 56% and 47%, and it's relatively even. It wasn't really until those last few minutes that the, the Spirit got those extra baskets. Rebounding, I think that um, they need to take care of business, and uh, I think it's um, it's right on track where it should be this game. Eleanor Sharp, you enjoying it? Absolutely, Jared. I'm really impressed with the, the quality of offense, particularly I'm down here at the, the Bendigo end. And just the patience, you know, they're not rushing, and obviously that is being led a lot by Christy Harrower, but the other girls are feeding really well off that. They're getting a lot off that uh, wing to baseline screen. Danny Nong probably need to make a few adjustments there defensively, step up and bump. One of the players that's impressed me a lot is Eleanor Harring. She's creating opportunities for herself and her, her teammates, and she's been a real surprise packer for me. For Danny Nong, I think that... Uh, Ryan's probably to step up, so watch for this quarter. She's a big game player, and I think she'll probably come to the party. Hunt's doing a fantastic job, and I think they need to look to run a little bit more. They'll be in good shape. Second quarter underway as the Spirit by seven, and the Rangers start with the ball. Todd Hunter. With her first touch of the evening so far to Ryan. Who works her way around the perimeter. There's no way in. She has to take a shot falling back. It was optimistic. Harrow down the floor. That is a perfectly placed ball for Herring, who had the hands dragged by Ryan. Again, Herring got rewarded for running the floor, and that's just a great pass by Christy. Athleticism by, by Herring. And it was really good of her to turn and get that shot up. Now she's at the line. 17 and 8 in the two matches last weekend. The 17 against Adelaide of greater value in a, a team performance of 65. It's her ninth tonight. The career high was, in fact, that 17 points against Adelaide. She gave that a shake tonight the way she started. She should have been at 10. She stays at 9. McInerney digs herself out of trouble there. Todd Hunter. It's a great little moment um, in the change rooms beforehand with official team photos being taken. Todd Hunter and Hunt stood back to back to work out who was taller and by virtue of the slightly higher bun, Todd Hunter got the nod. <laughs> Two points won't go though. Great rebound by Downey who kicks it back outside and Ryan can make the good work. Count, no heavy body contact underneath. Todd Hunter crashes down. The ball is called the Spirit's way. Bendigo really need to be aware that Danny Nong is going to the to the offensive glass very hard. Downey's athletic. In that case, Todd Hunter went hard. They really need to address their blocking out. Bendigo with the last five points of the match. They lead by eight. With a chance to make a double figures on the way down the floor here. Harrow up for the cutout pass underneath. McLean back to Harrow unmarked for a moment. It was all she needed. She's to 10. 
McLean did a good job of recognizing that Chrissy's player had held down on her player and that she had a good inside uh, outside game. Todd Hunter the long way home there. Back out to McInerney. Couldn't get it into Benningfield, but the foul for pushing has been called. The Raiders to get the uh, Rangers to get another crack at it with a foul called on Finnegan. Harawa leaves the court. Now she has been training for five weeks, but she hadn't played a match for two months. So how many minutes she'll be able to fulfill tonight will be a source of some interest. I'm Humps sure she could play, I'm sure she could play 40 if required. Ryan. Well marked, finding a way around Finnegan. Works it underneath the Benning field. The defense is strong, but she's up to the task. Benning field let the ball have a good look, but on the third bounce it fell. Benny go by nine. Herring works into the paint. She'll get it. The basket was on. Great shot block there. She'll get a second chance. Downey was the original block. McInerney crunched underneath. The Ravens survived that venture down the floor. Again, Bendigore in that four high set and having a big player cut lower, mismatch low, and, and Danny Nong need to think of how they're going to defend that. Hunt squares up with Butler this time down the floor. So a clear out to the right. McInerney open. She works it out. Downey can take the shot. She was untroubled. Came up empty handed. Deanne Butler launches Bendigo down. Trying for the ball off the fingertips of McInerney underneath. They all go to ground. So clean. We will have hurt the play here for the Spirits. Louise McLean, who's played some ball in Kansas, gives it off to Butler. That is sweet shooting. Two more to the total. Dan Butler normally went on top of the screen, and, and because Nicole went underneath, she just flared and got a great shot away. The defense is a real hustle. There's some intensity about it. There's no easy way through for Danny Nong Ryan finding it there. The foul is called though. It's against McLean. And still a Rangers ball from the side. Ebziri checks back into the game. Downey heads to the bench. Hunt, the architect of much that's taking place. Benningfield back to Hunt. Butler keeps her away. McInerney. Granted access to the shot, should she want. Ryan takes it to the right, makes it. Nine points with Ryan to five. Bendigo leads. King into Richards, pushing for the basket. Good shot block from Benningfield, and then underneath. Richards can't make it. McInerney and Hunt conspire. Hunt pushes deep, kicks it back out. Ryan works it around to McInerney. And they'll take some time to construct the play they want, Danny Nong. Ryan from range. No good. It's Butler who's waving the play. She uses King. Back through the hands of Butler and on to Finnegan. Finnegan works it out. Richards underneath. It's triple teamed almost. There was no way through there. Get another chance, Bendigo. It's a pity she fouled there. She really just needed to keep her arms straight up because she had nowhere to pass that ball. So Bendigo will go to the line after the timeout. We're going inside with Team Harawa. Early, okay? Got to get there early. Just that denial stuff. Okay, and even then when she drifts out and they want to throw it there and come and get that hand off, denial there as well, so they can't reverse the ball. All right, you understand that? If somebody's coming off, you have to show. You can't be standing back in here. Down he comes off and just shoots that jumper. You've got to be up there showing on that. It can't be that far away. All right, um, 
we, we've got that. I, yeah. Who, who's Kate? Caitlin's got two. I want to go at her a bit. Who's she guarding? Who's she guarding now? Probably you, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah. I need to go at her, but if she's guarding one of you, just clear out of one side of the floor and go at it and see what we get out of there. Okay, got to keep the defense up. Let's get some stops here. Come down. Let's run motion corner again. Let's go. One, two, three. Instructions of Bernie Harawa. His team Bendigo leading by nine on this Friday night with six minutes left in the second quarter. I liked his instructions about trying to go after Caitlin. She's a focal point for Danny Nong. She could get her into uh, another foul before this half then that would go a long way in um, cutting their scoring options down. Christy Harrower back on the floor. Eleanor Sharp, what was uh, what was making news in the Rangers set up? Well, a fair, uh, a fair level of intensity and urgency about that time out there, Jared. Uh, uh, Dale Waters wants lots of ball reversal. He thinks they're too stagnant in offense, so more movement, uh, both player and ball movement. Defensively, he's not happy with uh, the rotation, so he really wants to drop down, particularly on Gabby Richards. She's, he thinks she's uh, way too open. So uh, look for those adjustments. I like it from Caitlin Ryan on three-point territory to tighten this ball game up to six points. So Bernie Harrower spoke of stops. Well, the Spirit missed the chance for their two and gave up three at the other end. Now to pull those back. King underneath did all the heavy work. And got her just for a wall. Bendigo set a lot of screens in their offenses, and they're utilizing them very well right now. Caitlin Ryan, she has eight. She uses Hunt. Back around to McInerney, who's turned it over underneath. Finnegan saw it coming. Harrow, a lovely cutout ball again for Butler. Tried to work inside. Gave it off. Got support from Finnegan. Lovely team hoop there. Finnegan's first points. One thing I like about Bendigo is that often they're able to play with two point guards on. So right now, Deanne Butler, Christy Harrower, and Kelly Wilson's on. So any of them can handle the ball. Any of them can push it up the floor. Whoever, whoever gets the ball first. Well, the Spirit had the ball first. They lost it. Ebzeri getting in the way, drawing a foul and keeping possession. Looks like we're heading to the timeout again with four minutes and 20 seconds left in the first half of the Geelong Arena. It is 34-24. It's the Bendigo Spirit by 10. Take you inside. It's very much the sounds of the game. We're with the Rangers. So they've got Jazz. They've yeah, got Gabe. That's right. So now we're going we're gonna to run, run some greens going here now. Look at some dies off that. And then we want to go some trans as well. We want to go trans threes there. So we have the back screen. So greens and trans threes out of that, OK? Yep. Like defensively down here, we're doing a much better job, all right? Then we've got we to keep running out of that. So you've got to get it and go. Pull back out of that. You run the deep catch really hard. Straight into the trail post position. Then it's greens or trans. Here we go. Rangers. 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 Dale Waters. His instructions and thoughts with his team down by 10. Cunningham back in the game. Richards and Harawa. With this green play, we'll look to um, look for the guard to pass the ball into the post and then get it back and look at their big player diving. Claire Papavs is in for her first minutes of the night. She inbounds. And Hunter's calling the shots. Cunningham breaks for her, gives the screen. To go the hard way through there, back out to McInerney, didn't make it. And Wilson with the rebound. Sought to Harrow and into the hands of Butler. We've got Richards working into the paint. She'll set up underneath. Wilson moves it around for Harrow. Further out to Finnegan. Finnegan does try for Richards, but McInerney, well, you're not one of the most decorated defensive players in the history of the league without being able to pick those off. The look away to Cunningham, to McInerney. Now to Ryan. Can't quite get clear. She takes the shot anyway. Good job, Caitlin Ryan. The last two shots of Caitlin's have been pull-up jumpers as opposed to three-point shots, so it's good to see that Certainly last year we saw that in her game, and it's good to see her bringing it this year as well. 
She's to 10, 17 to get her season underway a week ago in Launceston. Harrell is going to use Richards, set her a task in the paint. Just about uh, had four set up against her at left, the open shooter in Butler. Richards will finish the job, no. Didn't find the steal that time. And Danny Nong trailing by eight. And looking to eat into this margin. McInerney and Hunt. McInerney again. This time out to Popovs. She can't make it. Hunt will come up with it though. And a new shot clock for Danny Nong to work with. And pushes it underneath. Ryan again. She's to 12. She is the hot shooter on the court right now. She is, and she recognized that she's got that little bit of height over Christy Harrell, who was guarding her, and took her straight down into the block. Finnegan. Pumps it to Richards. Outside to Wilson. Now to Butler. He's well marked. Had to go to Richards. Shot clock at four. The shot had to go up, but didn't drop. No points for the Spirit, and it will tighten further. We're at six. And the Rangers are on a run here. Join some dominance with a couple of minutes left in the quarter. Well, Foul is called on Butler. It's really changed the, the momentum of the game. Bendigo now seemed very stagnant and have really slowed down their offensive output, and Danny Nong seemed to have that little bit of, bit of rhythm in their, in their game at the moment. Uh, certainly, Bendigo sensing that. Bernie Harrower. Oh, well, actually, it's Danny Nong who called the timeouts. No, no, it is, uh, it is Bernie Harrower, and we'll listen to what he's got to say. You've got Christy as the first receiver, so that means she's the second receiver. It's got, Gabe's got to be first receiver, yeah. She's got to be first receiver. We want to run that. Hey, just trying to force it a little bit down there. They're getting you under the backboard and doing all that sorts of thing. Let's get you ha happening out of some uh, normal away with you out of the four spot. Okay, you out of the four spot. See what we can get from that. Yeah. Opposite side. So you start strong side and then go through that. And then um, let's have you starting down in the five spot. So you'll be the one coming off that. Okay, I think you've got to go away from Mac and playing defense. We need to make her be the defender on the passer and now go to the person that Mac has got guarding. Right. Is she guarding you? Uh, yeah, there, yeah, okay. <laughs> Christy Harrell were talking about the way to play Emily McInerney. Uh, together they were gold medalists at the Commonwealth Games. Well, good point to try and keep the ball away from whoever Maka's. Get her out of the play. Get her out of that defensive area where she can make deflections and come up with it. Eleanor, a bit of fire and brimstone from Waters. Yeah, absolutely. Abdel was pretty happy with the defensive effort uh, by the girls and encouraged them really, uh, particularly in that middle area, just to keep clogging it up. Uh, offensively, they're going to look to run an on-ball screen and dive um, play next up. So uh, hopefully that comes off for them. Claire Papov makes this a four-point ball game. And it's six points on the trot for the Rangers. As halftime looms ahead of us. Butler for Bendigo. Need some points on this venture down the floor. Wilson, inside, underneath the Richards. Got it from Butler, made those points. It's a good target underneath, Richards to eight. Harrow has ten and Herring on the bench at the moment with nine. That's the scoring tale for Bendigo tonight. McInerney and Hunt. They're making a good partnership for Danny Nock. McInerney has it. Pretty well wide open. Fit it underneath to Probst. Lost the ball, lost her footing, lost a lot, and Harrower will take it away. She uses Herring again on the trip down the floor, not this time. Hunt has a mind to whisk it down the other way. Caitlin did a good job of not fouling on that last trip down the floor. McInerney works it out for Papavs, not to be Richards underneath, and Harrower will see the Spirit with a chance to build on their six point lead inside the final minutes of the half. Wilson and Herring and Richards thought about Harrower, but it went back the other way into the hands of Wilson. Has a decision to make. Richards didn't get hands to it, but it's off the hands of Probst. The Spirit will get it back with six seconds on the shot clock. 
30 seconds on the game clock. Leading by six. Christy Harrow has got to make the right call here. She has it, well teamed, flicks it to Richards, makes the points. Good combination. And now trying to deprive Danny Nong of the final points of the half. McInerney and Hunt. Shot clocks the game clock here. McInerney tried to shovel it up. Richards was having none of that. I'll still get a chance though, Danny Nong with seven seconds on the clock. You can see clearly off the hands of Richards there. Last shot of the half. Up from Hunt, overthrown, off hands. That'll do. It's the Bendigo Spirit 38, leading the Danny Nong Rangers 30. Half time at the commencement of round three on Grandstand WNBL. We are at the arena in Geelong. Laurie, what do you think? Well, I thought it was a really entertaining start. The first quarter, I think the, the second quarter became a bit of a, a bit of a grind out there, but um, we'll see what happens. I think both teams will make some adjustments at halftime. Eleanor Sharp is with Christy Harrell. We're going to hear a word or two as they leave the court. Eleanor. Christy, uh, pretty good first start for you. your first game back in the WNBL. How do you feel? I know, I'm such a confidence player. As soon as I hit my first shot, I just have so much confidence. But, um, you know, we've kept them to 30 at half time, and that's what we wanted to do. And we just got to continue with the defence, because defence wins games. Yeah, absolutely. Specifically, what do you think uh, Coach Harrell is going to have to say at half time? Um, we just want to, we, we need to block out a little bit more, I think. We don't want them to get too many offensive rebounds. And, you know, last week they let Perth have 92 or something like that, or 100, or, I mean, that's way too much. So I think he'll just, we we work pretty hard on the track this week, and we just need to continue what we did through the training sessions. Good luck for the second half. Thank you. Christy Harrell with Eleanor Sharp. I'll have a longer chat with Christy, which we recorded before we got underway tonight shortly. Laurie, your thoughts in a moment. It's half time. It is 38-30. The Spirit leading the Rangers. Join five South Pacific Islanders on a perilous expedition to study the traditional behaviours and customs of the English. We cannot believe our eyes. English feats of strength. <laughs> Come on! English sacred rituals. <laughs> English ceremonial feasts. So do you ever eat your pets? And English tribal dancing. Meet the Natives, 8.30 Wednesday on ABC2. Are you gullible? I'm shocked. Then they still. Are you susceptible to suggestion? I went out on the streets to see what I could get people to do. Find out what tricks people are using on you. There's the first touch, and there's the second touch, just to be certain. And can you learn how to make people do what you want? The experts use all kinds of psychological tricks. This new series could show you how. The People Watchers, Monday to Friday on ABC2. I've never seen in film a black man go up against authority. The idea was to show that we weren't degenerate. Either you loved it or you hated it. Melvin Van Peebles. I was born at night, but not last night. Writer, filmmaker, singer. The man is crazy. Have you ever heard Melvin sing? How to eat your watermelon. Well, if I like watermelon, I'm going to eat one. Why should I not eat it because of And enjoy it. Sunday, ABC2. How would we know the good from bad if it wasn't for Margaret and David? I like musicals. I don't like this one, David. Oh. It was awful. Two stars. I'm going to give it three and a half. I shed a tear at the oh, end. Really? That is pathetic. That's why I'm giving it four stars. I think it's one of the best films of its type that's ever been made. I'm giving it four stars. I'm giving it four and a half. I think it's terrific. Get more bang for your movie buck. Join us at the movies. On ABC2. It's been a good physical contest as well as a, a bit of a shootout at times. Uh, at halftime, it's 38 points to 30. Bendigo with the lead over Danny Nong. It was seven points at quarter time, eight at the half. You enjoying it, Laurie? Well, look, it's been a, I think it's been a great game, a very high standard. No nerves at the start. Players came in, they nailed some shots. They were running the floor really well. 
um, and an inclusion of Christy Harrow looks like she's played with that team for a long time. She does, clearly the five weeks of, uh, of good work. This was the opening shot and Christy spoke about that, just being a confidence player, what a way to settle the nerves. Well, your first touch, your first shot, it goes down. That certainly set the tempo for the game. Following that shot, three more three-point shots <laughs> were uh, taken and, and made, so that, that was really exciting to see. What do you think Dale Waters would be making it from a Danny Nong point of view at the moment? Well, I think he really needs to address that um, action where the high-low action, which he talked about, and, and they need to look at when players are isolated down low, what they're going to do with that, whether they're going to double, whether they're going to come across and help that, more pressure on the ball from the outside so it can't go inside, things like that. You saw some of the work of Caitlin Ryan and uh, and Gabrielle Richards has been influential underneath. These are the numbers to the half, and the shooting wasn't quite as sharp in that uh, in that second quarter as it had been earlier, and the percentages on the wane a little there. Overall, the rebounds going the way of the Rangers, but there's not much in that. Well, there isn't much, and, and it's what we said, that it was a little bit more of a grind the second quarter. The first quarter was very free-throwing basketball, a lot of running up and down the court, um, transition-type baskets. The second quarter was much more of a grind, that, that inside-outside game. I thought it became more physical in the second quarter. And um, still, though, the pre shooting percentages the coaches would be relatively happy with. And through each of the teams, uh, Bendigo building their lead, of course, tonight. They're trying to overcome this 10-match uh, losing streak. They've got a reasonable spread, too, on the points with Richards and Harrower and also Herring, uh, who in particular in the first quarter was extremely influential. Well, it's really good to see that players aren't sitting back and going, Christy, you do it all. She's got 10 points, but Richards is in there. As we said, Herring's there. They're all looking to play their role with Christy and not just letting her do it all. And the Danny Nong side of the coin, Caitlin Ryan was the hot shooter on court at one stage. She's worked at 12 and not quite as much support there as uh, Coach Waters would want. She needs some more support, definitely. She's taking a good range of shots, some threes, some pull-up jumpers, as we said. But I think they need a few in more inside looks where they can get that ball inside, maybe make it easy rather than relying totally on their perimeter game. The story that's not of, uh, of the night is Christy Harrower and how she's come to be back in the WNBL after such an absence, such a successful absence as that. I had a chance to speak with her Christy, before we came on court tonight. WNBL. What sort of emotions have you brought tonight? I actually have mixed emotions, to be honest with you. I um, would love to still be in Europe playing, but um, that's not possible this year because the Russians cut me. So it's always good to come back here and play, and I'm just grateful that they gave me the clearance so I can come back and play here in for Bendigo. The Russians cut me, it's a dramatic phrase. Yeah. So what, what took place? Um, it was quite... Um, well, it was weird because I think two weeks be before I actually was about to leave, I got a phone call from my agent saying that... Um, that he'd received an email that they'd actually, my services were no longer required and they wanted to part ways with me and they decided to sign um, a post player in my position. And um, But you know, I mean it's life, it happens and the Russians have so much money that they can cut people and buy people at any, any time that they want and so you know, I mean it happened and there's nothing I can do about it. I, like I said, I'm just grateful that they've given me the clearance because they weren't going to give it to me. Right. Um, they were really they didn't want to pay my money and they were just hoping that I'd go back to Europe and find another team but I decided that I wanted to stay here and I mean I haven't played in this league for eight years now and um, it's just great to be home and have a summer. I haven't had a summer for three years. Has it been time well spent? You've played in the WNBA, Germany, France, Russia. Has it been sort of a basketball life well led? It has and, and the biggest thing is there's so much that you need to sacrifice. A lot of people might think that going to Europe is easy and it's not. I mean you deal with so many different nationalities and different teams and um, but it's been a big learning experience for me and I think I've really grown up as a person and as a player. I feel like I've really matured a lot and you have to because you're pretty much by yourself over there. You have to support yourself and things go wrong. You don't have people to go to. And But um, it's been a great journey though. I imagine you're right back in the family fold now with yeah. Bendigo. And there must be nice sides to that. And your dad's coaching you again, which I would think has its frustrations as well as its upside. Um, yeah, it does. But the good thing is, is um, I suppose the girls are a lot younger than myself. And, um, you know, I feel like I have a lot of respect there with the girls. And, and even with Dad, he, he always listens to what I have to say. And, and um, you know, I always pipe up in a timeout and, and say things or in, in um, training. So, you know, it'll be interesting. But I just hopefully, you know, we can get on a winning track and, and uh, get back into 
or be a part of the playoffs this year. Will you play the full season here? Is that your intention? And do you, have you got an idea about the future? Yeah, I don't. I don't know what the situation is at the moment. But I think if I had my way, I'd stay here the whole season and then maybe look to go back to Europe in in February. But um, the thing that I had to come to an agreement with the Russian club was that if I decided that I wanted to go back to Europe, I actually have to get permission from them. Okay. So it, it would just depend on that situation and, and when I want to go back. Um, they might want me to go back and play the final series against okay. them or something like that. So I think that's why they put it in there. And will playing in this league uh, be enough to have you tuned up for when the Opals start to recommence their campaign? Yeah, I think so. I think um, for me right now, I'm actually a little bit nervous for tonight's game because I haven't done a, done a lot of training and, and have, I haven't played since the Olympics. So, um, but I think, you know, if I work hard over this summer and, and do little things that you can't do in Europe, like weights twice a week and individuals, then I think I should be okay. Good luck. Thank you. We look forward to seeing how it pans out. Thank you. Christy Harawa, who's made such a great start, as we would have expected in the WNBL, her return. She's a four, she's a three-time uh, uh, All-Star five player, 10 points in the opening half tonight. She has her team leading by eight. Caitlin Ryan from the Danny Nong Rangers is with Eleanor Sharp. Caitlin, great comeback in the second quarter there. What do you think really changed that momentum? Because you were a bit stagnant in the first quarter, but something really kicked in. Yeah, I think they were killing us um, offensively. They were getting too many easy looks in the post, and uh, I think we doubled down a bit and made it a bit harder for them to get it inside, and then we ran off their misses. Which So when we do get out and run, we look pretty good, but it's all we're typically a defensive team, and we're going to have to win games that way again. And what was the message from Dale at halftime? Um, to not let any lap like we we came out and we got those couple of stops and scored and then they scored six points in a row so those small lapses they can be really costly when you're playing very good players Caitlin good luck for the second half thank you the Rangers are eight points down at the main break it's grandstand WNBL tonight at the arena in Geelong the one stop here for the season Bendigo one at their uh, at their match here last year in fact it was against Pauline it was the last time they've won on the road they're enduring a 10 match losing streak but they have the lead at the half so there's a fair bit invested in this you would think for the Bendigo spirit second half we're underway Danny Nong and Bendigo the Rangers with some work to do Got to find the way early. Caitlin Ryan, beautiful ball underneath. Shot out further for Benningfield to take the shot. She couldn't make it. And hit with intent by Kelly Wilson. Kelly Wilson's actually been very quiet so far this game. Considering last week she scored 17 points against Perth and 16 against Adelaide, we really haven't seen her much in the action. Harrow starts as she did in the first half with a meaningful basket. It's double figures again the spirit way. The biggest lead is 11. Right now it stands at 10 and Bendigo will be looking for a stop here. They went the double team but Benningfield's got it. Hunt with the open shot, it falls. And she is happy about that. She's to seven. It was a big bucket, wasn't it, from where we are in the game. Harrow doesn't. Push underneath this time. Richards uses Herring, who under the coverage makes the points. And the coverage was severe as well. Downey and McInerney to Hunt. The Rangers probe. Benningfield, she went shoulder to shoulder. She took the shot and came up short. Here's Wilson trying to impose herself on the match using Harrower. Harawa, she's got Herring. She couldn't quite get it there. Under the foot of McInerney. Both teams are utilizing the on-ball screen um, quite a lot, and Bendigo are doing a good job of doubling when Danny Nong run that on-ball screen. Harawa was open. She's deadly. Great to see one of the world's best, not just Australia's best. She's at 15. And the Rangers have made a meal of that down the floor. Biggest lead of the night, it's a dozen. This is the work of Christy Harrower. Lovely air on the shot, wasn't it? 
from the three-point territory. Her third three-pointer from four attempts tonight. This time she's pushing underneath, uses the body offloaded. We see they ran that same exact play, only this time Nicole Hunt anticipated where she was going to go, and Christy, with her smarts, went straight to the basket and didn't use the screen. Third foul for McInerney. Coach Waters has taken the water. And Christy Harrell is going to the line. She's done all the scoring in the half so far. And a chance to push this out to alarming proportions for Danny Nong. No mistake with the first. Harold will climb to 17 on this shot. And she does. Nicole Hunt at the other end for the Rangers. They've conceded seven in a row at the start of this half. Many points came from Hunt. Now they work it underneath to Benningfield. And she pulls two back, but Harrow was on the move. Well read by Caitlin Ryan. Dandy Nong, Rappel. Up to pause, Ebzeri and McInerney. In for Benningfield. Took advantage. That's something she'll, she'll be really happy with that. A back to the basket move to begin with, and then a, just a nice little mid range shot. Harrow pulls up. Doesn't make the shots. And a rebound. She's having an impact on this game. Don't know how many minutes she'll be able to play Bloomingfield. She looks like she's just struggling a little bit to get up and down at the moment. Alan, all what are you seeing from the side? A fantastic matchup between Bettingfield and Richards, as we see right now. Just sheer strength. And fortunately, the referees are letting it go because that's what pure post offense defense is about. Two players getting down and dirty in the block and just uh, really muscling it up, and it's just wonderful to see. Spirit with a chance again. Wilson wanted to push inside. Now we see this again. Richardson, Benningfield. Richards got rid of Benningfield. Oh, Gab We're letting everything go. She'll be disappointed in that shot. She, she cleared Benningfield out of there and then missed the open look. They are banging bodies underneath for sure. McInerney and Ryan combining. Benningfield, her turn. No, she moves it outside. Hunt gets the screen from McInerney, takes the three, can't make it. Wilson nimbly moves it off to Harrow. Oh, the fake left, right, the shot is good. She's to 19. The power of what? Christy Harrow. We're going inside with the Downing Nong Rangers. Dale Waters has got his concerns. He's watched the deficit blow out to a dozen. Let's change this up here now. All right, listen up. All right, just here, like on the inbounds, Mills, you flat out deny her and face guard her, her the ball, OK? Then we got to make sure if they throw that long, we've, we've got people ready to help off out of that. So all over the court, you face guard to keep the ball out of her hand. When she comes off the on ball, let's double team that. So let's trap that, OK? So if she comes off the one which match there, you guys jam up on that there. Girls, stay in your stance because she will hesitate with the head right. fake and then blow by. And look to split and look to split the gap there and then we're off to the races, okay? Does everyone else just sort of head to help That's in. exactly right, okay? In offense here now, Mills, okay? Run corners but go guard to guard. So Caitlin's through, then coming off the on ball. Caitlin Ryan, there we go. Rangers. They'll be off to the races in Geelong on Wednesday, that's for sure. It's a public holiday in this city for the running of the Geelong Cup. The Rangers need to do some hustling right now. Well, that whole time out, Dale talked about how to defend Christie, what we can do to try and stop her, because right now, she's the biggest threat on the court. Harrower has nine for the quarter. She nailed 10 in the first half, so she's warming into her work. And Danny Nong has seven for the half, so they've been outscored by Harrower as a starting point, and Bendigo in their entirety. Ryan works it up to Cunningham, who needs to get into this match. That's shallow. McInerney follows up and makes a hard-fought two points. Harrell is calling the play. McInerney's first points tonight. Never been a prolific shooter. 
One of the finest defensive players the WNBL has seen. Herring had the ball knocked away from Herbert. Wilson got the rebound, worked underneath, and Abzeri reached across and committed the foul. The other thing Christy Harrow would be thinking is, Danny Nong have two point guards, or, or, or Nicole Hunt and, and Amelia Todd Hunter, neither who are extremely experienced. And when a veteran player has an inexperienced player matched up on them, they just want to go to work. The foul was actually credited to Caitlin Ryan and is her third. Wilson makes the resulting two and pushes the margin back to 12. Todd Hunter is into the game for the Rangers. Ebzeri and McInerney underneath Cunningham. She was not looking when that ball arrived. Butler on the counter attack, kicks it out to Wilson. No way through, and she travelled. Caitlin Cunningham just hasn't quite got the intensity of this match so far. Plenty of time to work her way into it. But Danny Nong does need her to do that. Todd Hunter and McInerney working around Ebzeri. Good move underneath. She should have made the basket. Now she's in trouble. Oh, she's offloaded. She's stripped of the ball. She travels. And the exhaustion of the effort. She'll be thinking, why didn't I just make the basket and save myself all the trouble? And the bumps and bruises. Yeah, she was a marked woman when that ball came down. You can see Todd Hunter here trying to deny the ball out of Christie's hands, which I think is a pretty big task. Would be mopped down. With all the signs of perspiration. And that doesn't present a danger to the players. It was eight points at half time. Bendigo's way. They've stretched it to 12. Beyond the halfway mark of the third turn. Harrow has Todd Hunter to deal with. The press is on. Harrow behind the back. Nice little move. Twisting and turning and working away free to Herring. Finnegan. It's a foul underneath. It's called against Todd Hunter. So Harrower, after she got rid of the ball, then drew the foul from the back, Bendigo to restart. That's one thing Bendigo are doing very well there. A anytime they're making cuts, they're, they're cutting very hard. They're cutting with a lot of energy and cutting to be scorers every time. So that just makes them harder to defend. And a second go, getting things restarted. This time from the side. Wilson. Looks underneath. Butler's making good space out to the left. Wilson continues on, then uses Harrow up. Harrow uses it underneath to Herring. Cunningham reaches in. Foul is called on Caitlin Cunningham. She's got two fouls and just the two points. She's been on court for six minutes in total. Being used sparingly at the moment. Wilson's got to find a way in here. She did it. McInerney on the steal for Ryan. Ryan's got Cunningham making position for her. Reaching across was Herring. Didn't clear it. Cunningham underneath over the shoulder. Couldn't make it. Comes up empty. Bendigo by 12. And they'll get another chance. Pass was meant for Harrower, knocked over the side by McInerney. Clean comes back in, Wilson exits for the time being. She's been very lively in the second half. This game slowed to a bit of a grind, which suits Danny Nong, but unfortunately they have to make up that deficit. Benningfield with a good block underneath. She knows it and so do her teammates. Shot clock is at six with Harrower. To bring the ball in, Finnegan and Harrower. Back to Finnegan, got to go now. Two, one, knocked over the back. They'll get another chance with one second on the clock. Got to be good here. Straight through the fingers, it's got to be. Harrower takes it. Couldn't get clear of Cunningham. Foul call. 
The Rangers survived that one. Cunningham credited with the block. 12 points. The Rangers need to eat into this, and you fancy they've got to start doing it right now. Cunningham uses it underneath. Benningfield was heavily marked. Offloaded again. Foul is called. Finnegan credited with it. And Caitlin Cunningham just starting to work her way into it. Yeah, I thought that would have been a, a violation on the shot and sent her to the line. It looked that way, didn't it? Foul called again. Caitlin Ryan doesn't get the points there. It'll be Danny Nong from the side with the no, fresh shot clock at 24. Finnegan picks up two fouls in five seconds, and she's at four. Bendigo have just become a bit um, undisciplined in their fouls right now. Doesn't matter the sport. When you're not winning, it's very difficult to find the way to win. They've done it all right so far, Bendigo. They're in a lull right now. Cunningham can't put them to the sword. Hunt might underneath. Good hustle. Harawa is the experienced head in this lineup. It's the spirit look to settle. Doing it all herself. That would have been really something on the hook shot. It wasn't to be. Christy Harawa is interested in debating the points. Dale Waters is happy to see the stop. Alison Downey is coming into the game. Caitlin Cunningham returns to the Dandenong bench. I'm not sure that last time down the floor, McInerney picked up Christy Harrower. I'm not sure that that just was that, that play phase. It'll be interesting to see if that's the case because certainly McInerney can, that's the beauty of her. She can guard a big or a small. Hunt to Benningfield, who's matched against Richards again. McInerney, Benningfield, with Richards standing in her way, Downey. Tries to burrow through the shot clock, reached two when it went up and it came up empty. Butler at the other end. Richards, Harawa to Herring. It's worked a couple of times, not this time. Hunter's on the steal. They stare her down. She finds a way over the top to Benningfield. McInerney back to Benningfield. This should be a big basket, not to be. Eleanor Sharp, how are you seeing it? A bit, a bit messy at the moment, Jared. I think uh, both teams should go back to what they were doing in the first half and be patient on offense and take the right shots. Both, interestingly, are doing exactly the same thing, rushing things and not getting high percentage shots. They want to get shots under the basket at the moment because nothing is really falling from outside. So I'd like to see them slow down a little bit. Low percentage from Louise McLean. Scoring is dried up. Danny on Hunts. Cuts through, into the paint, makes the two. Eight point ball game. Hunt goes to 11. Benningfield's at 10 and Ryan 11. And the double figure score is for Danny Knight. Richards with Harrower. Harrower trying to get it back to Richards. Not this time. Hunt down the floor, tipped away by Butler. Danny Nong will get it back. Not before the timeout, though. We will go inside with the Bendigo Spirit. The lead is as it was at half time. It's eight points. I know you're getting tired, but you're getting lazy in things that we're doing. We're not doing things hard enough. We're not making good screens coming off, you know, setting your man up to come off the screen hard. And at the moment, they're just because we're playing to the scoreboard. They're just out hustling us. It's not good enough. All right, we have to finish this quarter off here. Come out, you have to be stronger. You're gonna play some D for me at the other end of the floor, okay? And at the offensive end, make yourself a target. You just can't allow people to be pushing us around at the defensive end here, and then at the offensive end, letting them push us around there as well, okay? We've gotta to be tougher at both ends of the floor. Um, let's, go with, uh, let's go with a head tap here to Kingy straight out of the, out of the timeout, okay? So you'll start, you'll start in, come in, or even, yeah, start in, come out, and then, Christy will be the one screening for you. If you have to, you have to run it all the way through. Okay? 
words of Bernie Harrower echoing, echoing what Laurie and Eleanor have been telling you. It's become a little frayed. Fatigue becoming a factor. Late in the third term. Still 52 seconds left on the clock. Whatever scores are registered here will be significant. Here's Bendigo by eight. With Hunt to restart. Downey broke underneath. Went to Ryan, though, instead for McInerney. Patience in the McInerney play for Hunt. Offloaded was Downey. That'll be called on Deanne Butler. That was another one of those undisciplined fouls where she was just trying to fight through the screen, couldn't get there, and just pushed her. Hunt searching for a way. She uses it underneath for Ryan. Turns, shoots, misses. Danny not miss out there. Just feel like that's quite significant. Butler and Harrower. She's got McLean working for her, but we'll go back to Butler. We're watching the shot clock reach 12. Using it for King and now Richards. Richards going to take the long range shot. That was never on. The rebound's crucial and Benningfield got it. The Rangers with the last chance of the half. Benningfield stares off with Richards. Off to hard, has to take a Hail Mary, which lands. Wow. To end the half on a high for the Dandenong Rangers. Hunt to 14, the game score, Bendigo 51, leading Danny Dong 46. The Rangers with the last seven points of the quarter to make this much tighter than it was going to be, Laurie. Well, that, that last shot of uh, Nicole certainly is a great confidence booster going into this um, quarter time break. And, and again, it was a, a, a slightly different quarter. I thought that Bendigo just didn't have that that ball movement that they had. I think uh, Dale Waters' move of putting McInerney on to Christy Harrower certainly slowed things down when um, when that happened. In fact, just two points in the last five minutes from the Spirit, and you could sense that from Bernie Harrower. They stopped to a walk. They became ragged in their defence and weren't able to be creative with their offence. That's the mindset that he's got to be working on right now in the huddle. And he's got to be talking, as he said in his timeout, that they physically can't be pushed at either end of the floor. They can't afford to, to just let Danny Nong come up with some easy baskets. These are the numbers. The rebounds have been marginally the Rangers' way throughout, and uh, those percentages of field goals have been dropping as the night has progressed. 19 of 49 for the Rangers, 20 of 45 for the Spirit. This is thoroughly in the balance at three-quarter time. Eleanor. Jared, we have a game on our hands. My goodness, I wouldn't have predicted at half time that the score would be this close, honestly. But, uh, you know, credit to Dan Long, they've really clawed their way back in. It's probably very timely that uh, Bernie Harrower has this time to settle his troops down. I think the key to the fourth quarter will be really the team that gets the most possession because some of the shots haven't been hitting in this, uh, this third quarter. Team that comes up with possession, executes, and is impatient. And I think possibly Bendigo have the edge on that. They did a much better job in the first half, and I think uh, Bernie will be looking to get back to that same form. But uh, Dan and Ong, they're a gritty team. They can grind a team out right to the end. So I'm really looking forward to this final quarter. Well, Bendigo hasn't won since December. They take a five-point lead into the last quarter here at the arena in Geelong. There'll be issues of nerves and also poise to be answered here. Harrow is likely to be the one. She moves to 21. And why wouldn't you, when things aren't going well or things need to be steady, get the ball in her hands. Let her create something for either herself, as she did that last play, or one of her teammates. The defense was good as well from Louise McLean. Danny Nong with the error. And the spirit with a chance. King, who floats by, did that the hard way, but Richards with the offensive rebound, kicks it back out. Now it's Butler to provide the service off to McLean. Harrow, the shot clock, plenty of seconds on it. Richards against Benningfield, and a whistle pings this time. 
Kenny Benningfield adjudged to have gone too far in that face-off, but must have been significant. Well, as, Second um, for Benny. as Eleanor mentioned very early in the game, the refs really are letting them letting the girls play, and you can tell by the, the stats that that there haven't been that many trips to the foul line. And all power to our refs for doing so. Richards makes both. So the first four points of the last quarter go the way of Bendigo. Richards is to 12, and the margin returns to nine. Benningfield and McInerney all the way across to Hunt, who can't repeat the dose on the three-quarter time buzzer she came up with, but Ryan might be able to. What an important offensive rebound by, rebound by Allison Downey to then kick it out to Caitlin Ryan for that three-point shot. Bendigo by six. You get the feeling that we have an absolute cliffhanger on our hands. King from range. She nails it. King to four. Margin back to eight. Benningfield and Richards. Benningfield with a wide shot. And Butler's on the move. She's got McLean. Harrower and King. Richards unmarked this time. Couldn't take toll. McInerney with the bouncing rebounds. Hunt to use this a little more calmly down the floor. At this Rangers time... to set up, Hunt. Oh. oh, that is lovely shooting. She's having the game of her life right now. 17 points for Hunt. And really reading what her defender's doing. She has been spectacularly good. The recruit from the AIS in just her second game for Denny. Harrower underneath to Richards, should make it. Benningfield from the side, made the pressure. Richards has got to go again. Couldn't do it. Chopping foul is called on Benningfield. Her third. Gab yeah, Richards did all the hard work of, of getting position, reading it, sealing her player, then missing that easy shot. She should really be taking her third point now. Gets the first of two on offer. 13 for Richards. And another. Seven points, Bendigo's lead. Hunt and McInerney, it's been a familiar combination. Hunt again. Benningfield underneath. Leans away from Richards. Now looks to push in, gives it out, Downey, three. Big three-point shoot in here from Downey Nong. They're putting the pressure on. Four-point ball game. And it gets tenser still at the arena. Wilson all the way across for McLean. Got King on his shoulder. Oh, King trying to barge through. Foul is called. It's against Downey. Rangers are three from three from the long range shooting in this quarter. It's a Bendigo ball from the back. Herring underneath. Can't make them. Cunningham coming through. She sets up Hunt. She's got McInerney working for her. McInerney pulls up, won't shoot. Downey will. She goes in. Doesn't oh. drop. Had a good look in the hole. Came out. Herring underneath. Fed by Harrower, back to Harrower. Now for King, Herring. She make the shot against McInerney, she can't. Great defense from the Rangers veteran. She probably should have shot that, that very first shot she got on the transition. She was wide open, she could have just taken it in. Bendigo by four, the Rangers are coming. Cunningham, looking for two, which she can't make. Neither team are able to finish inside right now. They've got the good looks, but they're just not able to finish. Harrower tried for Herring. Downey closed well. The Rangers dodge one there. It's Ryan looking to set up with Hunt. 
Cunningham will move into the paint and will stay out with McInerney. She'll use Downey. Shot clock at three. McInerney's got to go. Great shot. Right at the death. The tour in, it's 59-57. This is getting tense. We're going in with Dale Waters of the Rangers. They've closed the deficit steadily. It was as many as a dozen. It's now two. You're going double that. Trap that. Some important baskets here now, all right? But we've got to make sure we get people going, going towards the O-boards because we've been knocking down a really good clip. We start to drive a little. We need second efforts on the boards here. Can't expect too much more from this girl here because she's working her ass off, off defensively there now. We want to look post to post inside now here out of the high low, all right? So just here, flee, run some greens, okay? But then sit ball side out of you two here. So that means you die first, Caitlin. Jenny, you lift, you've got your rip, or you got high low to Caitlin there, okay then? Here we go. Rangers. Momentum is with the Dandenong Rangers. They have closed the deficit to two points with five and a half minutes left in the match. And the Dandenong spirit, who haven't known how to win since December, have the nerve tester ahead of them. Harawa is the general. Richards and Harry are the weapons. Wilson's back in the game and she's been lively at times. Harrower and McInerney, there was some angst and aggro there. And McInerney wins that duel. That's a real battle between McInerney and Christy Harrower. Let's have more of that. You can watch that all night. Hunts and Cunningham underneath. Beautiful ball for Benningfield who ties it up. That was executed to perfection what Coach Dale Waters talked about in his time up, time out, the high-low action between the two post players. Wilson and Herring, they need some points here, the spirit. It's running against them. They've conceded the last seven. Richards with a big shot. Came up empty. And the Rangers have a chance to hit the front. I'm not sure they've led at all. They haven't. At no stage has Danny Nong led tonight. After the first three points was drained by the Spirit, they lead now. Off the fingertips of Jenny Benningfield. It's all going one way. And the ball's coming back that way as well. Bendigo really need to show some poise at this time in the game. They're, they're trying to do the hard things out there offensively, make the great pass. They just need to settle. They, they still need to push the ball up the floor. But then if they don't get that early, look, bring it back out, execute, set some good screens. It's going to be a heartbreaker if Bernie Harawat can't stem the flow here for Bendigo. They'll wonder how on earth they're going to win. Where will the win come from? Benningfield proving influential underneath again. That's the same play the last three times down the court. Danny Nong, uh, sorry, Bendigo need to recognize that and do something different. It's Danny Nong by four and the wind is at their back. Harrow has been double teamed. She's got to come up with something. She worked it out wide. No points, foul called. It's going to be a Bendigo ball. Three minutes, 40 left on the clock. Bendigo has squandered a lead of more than a dozen. They trail by four. They are not out of this, but there needs to be some poise because the Rangers are on an 11-point 11 11 point run. Christy Harrower doing it all herself. Can't make it. Draws a foul again. They'll get another look the Spirit. That was a good decision of Christy to, to keep going to the basket. Claire Papp has just got on the court and was defending her, and it's, it's pretty hard to come off the bench and, and uh, you know, contain somebody of Christy Harrower's stature. These are the points they so badly need. The first goes in. Makes it a three-point ball game. The class on the second as well. Harrow up to 23, and the Spirits still have a hope. 
Hunt turned away by Harawa. The press is on. Cunningham got loose. Benningfield underneath. Dug her way out. Couldn't make it. Cunningham came over the top. Standing firm in the defence was Finnegan. The spirit for the chance to tie things up. They can use the full time on the clock and bring the game under three minutes. Harrow was constructing it with Butler, who took on Ryan. Foul called. Four for Ryan. Inside the last three minutes, Bendigo with the ball from the strike. Here's Deanne Butler. The 27-year-old who can tie it up. No, misses the first. This is where teams have to really rely on their experienced players to know what to do in situations like this. Missed both. That's Ooh. disappointing. They might get another chance. Butler's wrestling for it. Jump ball is called. Unfortunately, we don't get those anymore. And it's the Rangers' turn for possession. We actually haven't been too many of those in the game tonight. It's such a tight fought match. You'd just love to see them go to the jump ball situation there and let's have a contest for us. But the lawmakers have judged otherwise. Dale Waters. He's feeling the nerves now. Hunt rushes down the court. Bendigo's the home side here in Geelong. The crowd is utterly absorbed without necessarily barracking for either side. Ryan uses it over to Benningfield. Cunningham underneath pushes through. Danny on by four. Good looks inside. Danny Nong have continued with that train going inside, and their bigs have come up with the goods. Benningfield to 16. Massively influential in this half. This has got a drop, and Harawa, of course, nails it. Big basket in a big time of the game. 26 for Harawa first up. You'd like to back her in a new market first up oh. on that four. What about that from Cunningham? We've hardly seen her all game, and she comes up with that shot. She's got a bit of magic about it. The Rangers by three inside two minutes. Harrower and McInerney staring each other down. Harrower can't get through. Benningfield almost. It's going to be a Bendigo ball this time. Shot clock is at four is their problem. You fancy they'll have a crack at three. If they land it, we're left. The spirit of chasing. After making the running for much of the night, they've been overhauled. They're still in it. Herring's got to go. Can't make the two. Finnegan's there to retrieve it. She works. She makes it. That's a good finish for Finnegan underneath under pressure. Danny on by one. Couldn't ask for a better finish on Grandstand WNBL. Hunt and McInerney wax. McInerney's going to take oh. it and make it. What about that from the veteran? They're sagging off her, assuming she's going to pass, and she's nailed two crucial shots because of that. I'll see you, Christy Harrower, and raise you an Emily McInerney. Outside for Butler. No. Harrow is on the hustle. Ryan knocks it over the side. It should be a Bendigo ball. 65 seconds to determine this match. Three points in it. The Spirit must score this time down the floor. Harrow goes, of course. So good. So good to watch. On that sideline play, they're handoff and on ball, and she just read the defense. Harrow at 28. Danny on by one. Inside the final minute. Hunt has been massively influential. What about that? Nicole has done that exceptionally well tonight. A little bit of a hesitation, change of pace. She's made three shots, three baskets by going hard. 
The timeout has been called by Bendigo. There's an extra point to come. The Spirit trail by three. It might be four shortly. Bernie Harrow. Oh, let's go. Let's go with handoff here to Christie, but out of stack. Yeah, we'll do it out of stack. We're going the opposite side, so I'm coming all the way around. Yeah, so but do it out of stack, swing through. I need yeah. to do it quick, though, because we want to try and get a two and then try and make them have the ball so we don't hey, have to foul. We're, we're in full court press here. We're in full court press. As soon as, soon as it comes into bounds, we're trying to get it trapped in that corner, but we've got to make sure we shift everything across. OK, we cannot give up layups. What is it, three? No, we don't need a foul. They've got one shot. Yeah, we'll have to get it. We go after it, go after it hard. No, don't foul first off because we want to make a yeah. miss, right? Yeah, yeah. So no fouls, no fouls. Hey, if we miss yeah. it. Yeah, no, we don't need to foul this possession. Do not need to foul this possession. So those are the tactics. Alan Orshap was inside the Rangers camp. Must be a better scene there than it was a little earlier on, Eleanor. Yeah, much better, Jared. Uh, look here for the, the Rangers to really lock down on Christy Harrell. That was a, a real focus that time out. Deny, fully deny, force um, another player if they're going to score. To, to score. When they get the ball back, they're going to be running a play called Horns, uh, which involves Benningfield and Ryan in a two-man play. So looking to, to hit Benningfield on the roll down. Four points. Danny Nongleaves, they've scored 26 to 17 in this quarter. Harawa makes her two. She's to 30. She left McInerney in her wake with a heavy body contact. Now they don't need to foul here. They'll still have the chance at one possession. Plus they only have one foul on the board, so they don't want to foul. If the Rangers get two here, they should win. Nicole Hunt to Caitlin Ryan. Shot clocks at five. Watch the clock. Ryan Benningfield, Hunt for three, no! Looks good in the air. Six the Spirit seconds. get a chance. Tie it all with it. Oh. Harrower got it off to Butler underneath. Overtime! Oh. Would you believe it? On the buzzer. 72 each. Brilliantly worked by the Spirit. They denied the Rangers, denied them even a look inside the shot clock. Push to the other end. Butler came up with the goods, and we get a little bit more of it. And Laurie, I'm wrapped that we get a bit more of it. Oh, I think that just that last play, I think there was a little bit of um, confusion on Danny Nong's part when they thought maybe the shot clock violation was going, going, to, going to take it to a sideline ball. D Butler's just run the floor. They've seen that hitter. Wow. Wow, was right. In, and the thing that's going get to get us across the line here is detalk. Hey detalk all the time. Christy, I've had three in that last play, and she gets a layup at the end of it. Right, so, listen up. Here, we need to make sure on the screening actions, when she's coming off on those curls, you've got to step off, bump your player, hand out in the lane, then recover back towards your player again. That's really, really important, girls. Okay, We must get that done, all right? Down here in offense now, when we come down fleet, let's run corners, let's go guard to guards and mix that in with some yeah, greens. Get that back screen up quick then so we can kick it off. We'll be open on that back screen because they haven't got any vision off that there, so be ready to cut straight off of that, okay? Hey, we're right here, we're right here, here we go. Let's go. Rangers. And then the next B, which is probably you, has got to go, you've got to go and get her. She's the one that's causing us the most damage in this second half. We want to right? trap off Macca. Yeah. Whoever, whoever's guard Macca, just go trap. Yeah. Make her make her shoot the ball. She, she, she made, she'll a couple, make, right there. made a couple eight footers. Let's see if she can make another one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Let's go with uh, Let's run the motion run, run, yes. Yeah. Motion in back. Okay. So five minutes to break the deadlock between Bendigo and Dandenong. I said at the outset it was a showcase night for the WNBL. They've brought the game to Geelong as they do once a season. It was a main event with the return of Christy Harrower. It's been really something to see her opposite number 10, Nicole Hunt. There's been Emily McInerney and Jenny Bunningfield. And at the other end, Gabrielle Richards. It's been utterly absorbing. And we get some more of it here in Geelong. And I think both teams enter this overtime period 
filled with confidence and momentum. Neither of them, you, you know, Danny Nong sort of came back, but um, with Bendigo making that last basket, they'd be feeling pretty good as well. Benningfield has denied that time. And Butler, who set us into overtime, coming down the floor. She'll use Wilson. Finnegan shoots it out to Herring and back to Finnegan. Wilson has Herring underneath. Harrower outside for three. It's been unbelievable to see Christy Harrower. What a privilege. 33 points. The WNBL just got so much better. Benningfield answers with two at the other end. Jenny Benningfield is up to 18 to go with Hunt's 20 and Ryan's 15. Harrow's 33 measures up with Herring's 11. Banging bodies underneath. Wilson launched herself. Benningfield got caught at the bottom. Danny Nong get the ball with the foul called on Wilson. It's really exciting to see the way Benningfield stepped onto this court. She's got 18 points so far. She's been influential at defensive end. She seems like a really hard worker out there, a very smart player. And I think she's been an excellent pickup for Danny Nong. Richards is at 14 as well. She's on the court pitted against Cunningham here. Cunningham, who had a couple of extraordinary moments, gets away with one there. Benningfield pushes hard again. Two more. She's to 20. A first glimpse of the 27 year old who's fought her trade in the WNBA in the US in Spain the Rangers will like what they've got Harawa uses Wilson Danny Nong's up by a point the spirit pressing here Harawa found Finnegan wide open should have been able to make it Ryan with the rebound Hunt down the floor they'll take some seconds off here three minutes left in overtime Hunt calls for Cunningham. Cunningham travels. Danny Nong are really working that left side of the court where the low post flashes high, the high post flashes low, and then they just look at pinning and sealing their player. McInerney and Harawa. They look at each other. They go to ground together. The ref decides there has to be a whistle, and it's against Emily McInerney. Her fourth foul. Have a look at it again. It's a reasonably honest confrontation, to be honest. But Harrow is going to the line to build on her 33 points. And to change the fortunes of this match. Her team trails by one. And stays that way. Is it her first miss from the free throw line? It is. It's been money in the Bendigo Bank until now. That one drops, and we're tied up at 76. Nicole Hunt marshalling her ranges. Almost picked off. Harrower had a look at it. Ryan got it back. Benningfield and Cunningham set up ahead. Ryan goes the long way around the mountain here and comes up dry. The spirit severe pressure foul called on McInerney she's out of the game that's a really critical foul because she's been doing a great job on Christy Harrower so they're going to have a few matchup problems now it is advantage Bendigo on that moment with two minutes 22 seconds left and McInerney out of the game Butler is at the strike Bendigo should lead. I think I'd be running Christy Harrower off screens, on balls, whatever I could to keep the ball in her hand. Emily McInerney is one of the best in the business at getting over on ball screens. Now with her sitting on the bench, that should open it up for Christy. There'll be an exhale of relief there. That's Butler's first from the free throw line tonight. She missed three on the way to it. Bendigo leads by a point. Hunts. Wants to go all the way across. It's Papovs who travels. 
She turns in disbelief to see the call. The Spirit get the ball with their one point lead. Wilson with Harawa breaking for her. Harawa goes, cuts in, rises. Good block by Hunt. And she gets it back. What a move. Cunningham, fingertipper underneath. Couldn't make it that time. Papavs is there to get it back. Ryan for three. No. Benningfield had it, lost it. The spirit by one. 90 seconds left. Wilson on the charge. That's it. That's a good decision just to settle things down, get yourself set up, get a good shot off. Richards off to Finnegan. Spirit by three. A minute 19. It had to be a timeout for Dow Waters. They've got to set up to reclaim or reel in the spirit here inside with the Rangers. Listen up. All right, we're right here, okay? Plenty of time left here within the game, all right? So, in offense here now, we want to go corners, but on the high-low lift, okay? So that means flee, catch the side, okay? Then through off that, look at her cutting off that back screen there, okay? As she cuts off, you sit down, you lift, you look at high-low inside there with Jenny. When Caitlin goes through, if that's not you can pitch it towards her. If you pitch it, you follow your pass and you're on ball with her. Is that clear? Is that you right with that? Okay, defensively, stay there, Harrow up. Come on, guys. We might need to switch here, so communicate it, okay? Here we go. Rangers. Rangers. The Rangers have got the work to do. Momentum has turned against them. They had what looked like a match-winning lead late in regulation. On the buzzer, Deanne Butler forced us to five extra minutes and the Spirit are having the better of it. Seven points to four in OT. Caitlin Ryan three would go astray right now. It's in her hands. Benningfield wanted it underneath. She stays out wide with Pappas. Ryan follows up. There's no way through. Benningfield's been prolific. Pushes her way to two more. One point ball game, 61 seconds. Substitution is made. Downey is coming in. Papavs is going out. Benningfield has 22. The Spirit have the ball. The tension is thick inside the arena. Harawa, beautiful ball underneath, and Richards drains the two. It challenges the Rangers to come up with a three, perhaps. 40 seconds left. Shot clock at 12. Ryan on the hustle, misses out. Wilson got to keep possession for the Spirit. Harawa has it under control. Oh. Hunt stole it. What a theft. Wilson fouls. Smart foul because they can afford to give some away. They've only got two, so that's not going to send a call to the line. Great moment for Nicole Hunt. Wilson with her fourth foul. Now Danny Nong need a three-point shot. Ryan goes underneath looking for two. It's off fingertips. Cunningham on the hustle. Spirit ball. Bendigo by three. 20 seconds left. Standing on need to foul right here, right now. Hunt knew it. She does. Harawa is going to the line. She's five from six. The Rangers trailed by eight at half time. It got beyond a dozen. They led close to regulation and Christy oh. Harrow misses. That's the pressure of the moment. You can't escape pressure, whether it's an Olympics, a World Championship or the WNBL. The second's got to drop. It oh. doesn't. The game Getting is still early. on the table. Oh, wow. Caitlin too Ryan, early. in too early. What a blue. You can't think Christy's going to miss three in a row. Oh, 
she missed three in a row, you wouldn't believe it. Bendigo get the ball back. That's the most crucial missed block out they'll have. Brian fouls and is out of the game. She joins McInerney on the side. It's not going to matter. We're inside the last 10 seconds. If the Spirit can find points from the line, it's over. Deanne Butler, it's her turn. Where Christy Harrell amazingly failed with three. It's the only thing she's done wrong tonight. Butler misses as well. Now, Danny Nong have got to get this block out done. If they can get this rebound, they still have nine seconds to get a shot up. There you go. That's going to make it nearly impossible. Hunt down the floor. She'll have to pull up and take three. She goes out for Benningfield. Time is against them. So is the game. Oh. Three magnificently from Downey. But it's Bendio on the buzzer, who win for the first time since December last year. They break a 10-game losing streak in overtime, and it is a triumphant return to the WNBL for one of the greats. Christy Harrower, who turned on an astonishing show with 34 points to lead the spirit back to the winner's circle. What about that? 82-81. It finished with maybe the shot of the night from Alison Downey, but it was one point too few. Well, it was, and, and what a way to end the game. I mean, Danny Nong will just be shattered. A couple of little mistakes right at the end. They they led going into that before that final buzzer. But look, I, I, I think they certainly can take heart from Nicole Hunt's 20 points. Benningfield, 22. She's only going to get better. She's come off an injury. So certainly, while it's devastating, I, I was really impressed with both teams. It would have been a heartbreaker for Bendigo who made all the running in the first half. They led by seven at quarter time, by eight at the half. They were wound back late to five. Extra time was required, overtime. And Eleanor Sharp is with our MVP. Guess who? The story of the night, Christy Harrower. Christy Harrower, you are the story of the night. My goodness, what a phenomenal game. My God, I, honestly, I did not know that I could last like 45 minutes. Well, I honestly didn't realize I was that fit. I was I was quite nervous before the game because I just didn't think I had the preparation. And But I must admit, I had a lot more motivation in training this week and knowing that I, there was a possibility that I could have played. And But you know what? There's two things I nearly did at the end of the game. I missed those foul shots and then I nearly fouled the three-point shooter. So don't, don't be so <laughs> tiredness. <laughs> don't be so hard on yourself. You made some fairly match-winning plays. What was it real? I mean, I, I really noticed from the sideline just the ter determination I saw from the Benigo team that you weren't going to lose this game. No, like the, I think we, we just believe that we're getting better every week. And I know that I haven't been a part of the first three games, but I've been at training and, and you know, we've been working hard. And we have a good group. We have a young group, but we have a good group. And I think the thing is, is we have to be competitive on the floor and just go out there and work hard. and. Defence is where we want to be, though. We want to try and keep teams to about 65, 70 points. And, you know, if we can do that, we can win any game. Now, you do quite a bit of coaching in the uh, timeout. So I was wondering, how does that go, you know, father-daughter relationship? Is that good for the relationship or not? Yeah, I think so. I think Dad, um, he, he lets me have my, my words and um, lets me talk all the time. And I just can't help it. That's just the way I am. And, and I think, um, you know, while I've been overseas, I mean, you, you're talking in different languages and I just... I've been, I think I've been a teacher over there and I think it's come into my game and, and it, I always pipe up and say, so I can't help myself. Well, we are, I, I think I speak on behalf of the WBL. We're so wrapped that you're back in the league, Christy. And uh, congratulations, a fabulous game and uh, good luck for the rest of the season. Hopefully you're around for the rest of the season. Yeah, thanks, Sharpie. No worries. If you love to see the best, no matter the sport, that is surely what we saw tonight. Christy Harrower just uh, walking back in like she'd never left as an all-star player that she left oh, yes, as eight years ago. Well, certainly, and, and what a message that sends to all the other teams and players that were watching tonight and the fans out there. How good is it to have her back? She did it all, starting with that three-point yeah. shot and ending with controlling the game right at the very end. So we're sampling the work of Christy Harrower. Her dad will have looked on with a broad smile. He knows what he's got in the stable. And when she was cut by the Russians, God, the Russians, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Bernie Harrower has seen his team led to victory tonight. 
by his daughter. It snaps a losing streak, which was reaching alarming proportions. He's with Eleanor. Bernie, pretty good pick up there you got tonight in that new recruit. But yeah, look, it's, uh, it's, look, it's just a relief, I can tell you. If we'd have gone 0-4 to start the season, it's a long way back. But to have Christy come in and do what she did tonight, she hasn't played for two months, so um, really pleased with her contribution. and fantastic game for her and I think it just shows you the level of class that she's at now and and I suppose it's why the Opals don't want her to retire anytime soon so the Opals and the rest of us Bernie also a fantastic team effort I mean Christy really drove that game but uh, you know she you had some fantastic uh, contributions from across the board I was very impressed with Harring and uh, Richards uh, um, Wilson everybody seemed to chip in yeah they did and they, I think that that's where we're trying to get to as a team I thought our defense held pretty good tonight and uh, I think it was in the last quarter where we let them get away a little bit but um, we worked pretty hard on that during the week to, to make sure we, we had that in place and we, look we know we've still got a long way to go before we become a, a genuine contender and uh, but having Christy back in will um, speed that up a little bit. Our development will be much quicker now that she's here. And, and you know, as you said, great team effort. We, we had some players, you know, different players contribute all night. Really pleased with the whole group. And, uh, you know, we, we still had a couple of players that were probably down a little bit. And if we can get them up and, and uh, let them ride on the back of Christy as well, I think it's going to be, you know, it's exciting times for us. Well, Bernie, congratulations on a fantastic game and good luck for the rest of the season. Thanks, Al. Bernie Harrower, and isn't facing Bendigo a different proposition now than it was at the start of the week for whoever comes up against them? Well, exactly. I, I spoke to Kerry Graff today, and she was saying it's good that they played them the first game with, without uh, Christy there because she do, does bring another dimension to the team. And we talked a lot about her being the MVP, but she did certainly lift the, the profile of some yeah. of her other players as well. The remaining games in round three this weekend, Sydney and Canberra. The, uh, the, well, they met last Friday night. You would have seen that. Townsville and the AIS, Adelaide and Perth. Our TV match next weekend is Dandenong and Adelaide. That's on Friday night. So the Dandenong, who, uh, the Rangers, who will be stung by tonight, coming up against one of the benchmark teams in Adelaide. If you want to sample this again, and really, why wouldn't you? ABC One, tomorrow afternoon, you just want to get a sample of that. We had to go to overtime, to do, uh, and we're glad we did because we saw Christy Harrower it's the spirit over the Rangers by one. That's the sort of game. Marino quickly down the court, links up with Foley, and the question is.